Previously on Accra History The year was 367. Armenian King Arshak II lay dead in Persian captivity, leaving his 14-year-old son Pap and the Kingdom of Armenia under the reign of his wife, Parantsem, now Queen of Armenia. Parantsem took refuge in the fortress of Artogerasa, which was now besieged by the Persians under the command of King Shapur II. She defends the fortress for two years until she was captured and killed by Shapur. But while she was defending the fortress, the queen managed to send her son Pap away to safety with their ally, the Roman Emperor Valens. This is his story. Armenia was long contested between the Roman and Persian empires. Though neither empire was able to conquer Armenia by force, largely thanks to the mountainous terrain, they still tried to exert their power over the region by political means. The Armenian nobility were divided between pro-Roman and pro-Persian, with the current ruling dynasty, Haus Arshaguni, having been loyal to the Roman side. Pap arrived in Marcianopolis, where the Roman Emperor Valens was wintering. Valens ordered him to stay at Neo Caesarea, which was closer to the Armenian border. So Pap waited and sent letters of support to his mother. In 369, at the request of the Armenian nobility, Pap, now 16 years old, was allowed to return to Armenia, but Valens was reluctant to give him any royal title in order not to violate a prior treaty that was signed between Rome and Persia. Pap was now garrisoned in the Roman frontier in Lazica along with the Roman officer sent to protect him. It was during this time that the long besieged fortress of Ardogerasa fell with his mother Parantsem, queen of Armenia, being captured and killed by the Persians. In the spring of 370, Shapur declared his treaty with the Romans to be void and decided to settle the Armenian matter by force, so he began preparing a massive army to invade Armenia. Learning of this attack, a 17-year-old pap, who had just become king of Armenia, started to muster his own army at Bagrevant. The Romans, who had armies nearby under General Trianus and General Vadomarius, also marched for Bagrevant and built a fortified camp while waiting for the Armenians to assemble. It was decided that General Musher Mamigonian would command the Armenian forces while the Romans remained under their own command. The Persian army was led by Shapur himself and was joined by their allies, the Caucasian Albanians, led by their king, Urnair. Most of what we know about this battle comes from the 5th century Armenian historian Faustus of Byzantium and the account of a Roman soldier historian Ammianus Marcellinus. According to Faustus, eventually Musher was able to put together an army of 90,000 Armenian men. Historian Ian Hughes, who specializes in late Roman history, writes, If these numbers are correct, it would appear that for this conflict the entire army of Armenia was gathered to fight Shapur, leaving all other borders undefended, a risk that Pap and Musher were willing to take in the face of the Persian threat. Furthermore, according to both Roman and Armenian sources, it seems like the Romans would not actively participate in the battle, but rather were engaged in protecting the Armenian king. After all, he was a direct descendant of the king and queen, and his family had been a loyal ally to Rome for many generations. The two sides met in 371. King Pap himself was armed and prepared to go into battle, but the Roman generals in charge of his protection did not permit him to fight. 
They said they were sent by their emperor to protect the king, and should something happen to Pap, they would be criminally responsible for his death when they returned to Rome. Instead, they advised Pap to take the Armenian Archbishop Nerses to a nearby mountain and secure a safe place. The Archbishop would pray and beseech the Lord for victory, while Pap can observe the battle from a high place so he could see everything that was going down. Pap was convinced, so he took the Archbishop Nerses and went up to a nearby mountain. The Armenian general Moucher came up to get his blessings from the priest. Pap offered his own horse and spear to the general, but Moucher declined, saying, I will use my own, king. Then he mounted his horse and with his brigade took the right side of the Armenian front and moved the wing forward. During the battle, Moucher's brigade broke the Persian battle lines, causing the rest of their troops to turn and flee while the Armenian soldiers chased them down for the spoils of war. Musher himself caught up with the Albanian king who was fleeing, but decided to spare him. He struck him on the head and said, Be grateful that you are a king and you have a crown. I will not kill a king. Although Pap was watching from the mountain, he couldn't quite make out the banners and emblems, so he started getting nervous. But the Archbishop Nerses calmed him down and they kept praying until the evening when the sun set and the battle was over. The two men finally learned of their victory. After the war, however, there was some drama. Some soldiers went up to King Pap and accused Musher of being a traitor. They said Musher wished for the king's death because he allowed the Albanian king to get away with his life when he could have killed him. When Pap confronted Musher about this, Musher responded, I killed all those who were my peers. Those who wear a crown are not my peers, but yours. Come, just as I killed my peers, do kill yours. I have never, do not, and will not lay my hands on a king. If you want to kill me, do so. But should a king fall into my clutches, as has happened many times, I will not kill him, even if I am slain. This might sound strange today, but I think it could have something to do with the concept of the divine right of kings. The age-old idea that kings are placed there by God, and they are serving God's mandate. This doctrine was popular in European Christianity and was present both in Roman and Persian beliefs, both of which had influenced Armenian culture and belief system for centuries before this conversation took place. With that in mind, one could make more sense of Musher's words and actions. He wasn't just sparing the life of an enemy leader, but revering God's will. So when King Pap heard these words, he began to cry. He got up from his chair, embraced Musher, and said, Worthy of death are those who dare to speak ill of Musher, a brave and honorable man. He has loyally labored to the point of death. His father died for my father. So why do they tell me Musher awaits your death? Behold, he is a judicious man who spared foreign kings out of friendship so why would he harm his own? Then Pap gave General Moucher many gifts and honors. Anyway, as a result of this battle, many Armenian territories were reclaimed from the Persians, including Arzanin and Corduin. Later on, the king of Albania, Urnar, would also send a message to Moucher thanking him for sparing his life and informing him of a surprise attack by Shapur, containing 90,000 well-armed men. You see, although he lost the battle, Shapur was still determined to take Armenia by force, and sure enough, he launched several minor invasions and raiding parties into Armenian territory, followed by another major assault that led to a second battle at Ganzak. At the Battle of Ganzak, the joint Roman-Armenian army defeated the Persians for the second time that year. After that battle, Shapur sent envoys and a truce was agreed upon. (laughs) 
Papp's rule over the Armenian kingdom was rocky from the start. He was struggling to rule a kingdom that was recently dismantled by Shapur. He also was at odds with the Armenian church, which he thought had too much power. Nerses would eventually forbid Pop from entering the church. In 373, Pap invited Nerses to a fancy dinner in his mansion under the pretense of seeking reconciliation. During the dinner, Pap offered Nerses some wine for the meal. When Nerses drank the wine, he realized it was poisoned, and with his last breath, he asked God to forgive the king's bad deeds. Man, I love Christian imagery. All the guilt and melodrama. Anyway, the archbishop was also a very close ally of Rome. Initially, Roman Emperor Valens tried to work with the Armenian king to install a replacement for Nerses, but the two couldn't come to an agreement, and Pap's refusal to cooperate angered the Roman Emperor. In addition, Pap started making demands over a bunch of territories that were formerly in his father's domain but had fallen to the Romans. And for the cherry on top, he started building better relations with the Persians. So this time, it was Valens who invited Pap to a fancy dinner in Tarsus. When Pap arrived, he saw that the emperor was not there in person, realized something shady was about to go down, got anxious and fled back to Armenia. The Romans sent two generals who were familiar with the Armenian terrain after Pap to try and assassinate him. An Armenian named Danielus and an Iberian named Barzimeris. Both of them failed to capture or kill Pap. Here's where things get really funny. Both of those generals gave an excuse that Pap had used magical powers to avoid capture and used a dark cloud to mask his tracks. The Armenian historian Faustus of Byzantium gives us a little more insight on a certain reputation Pap had developed, saying, When Pap was a child, his mother Paransem dedicated him to the Devs. Devs was a word used to describe evil supernatural entities similar to demons. Faustus writes, Pap was full of Devs from his boyhood for he was always doing what the devs wanted, and he did not even want to be healed. He behaved in accordance with the devs, and through sorcery the devs appeared upon him. Everyone could see the devs with their own eyes. Every day when people went to bid him good morning, they saw the forms of snakes arising from King Pap's breasts, snakes which curled around his shoulders. Everyone saw them and were afraid to come close, but he would respond to the people saying, Don't be afraid, they are mine. I don't know about you, but I think King Pap sounds pretty metal. Unfortunately for him, Valens then assigned Trianus, one of the Roman generals who was previously assigned to protect him, to gain his confidence and murder him. So Trianus invited Pap to a fancy dinner in 374. This was a huge banquet with many Roman foot soldiers, which Pap thought were all there to honor him. There were drummers, flutists, harpists, and horns playing music while Pap was enjoying his festive food and wine. Suddenly, the order was given, and two of the soldiers standing behind Pap raised their axes and struck the Armenian king successfully murdering him at age 21. The Armenian nobility who were loyal to Pap did very little to protest this move due to the large amount of Roman troops present on Armenian territory. Pap was married at an unknown date to a woman named Zarmantucht. She bore him two sons, Vologases and Arshag, named after his father. Both sons were too young to rule the Armenian throne, so the Romans nominated Pap's nephew, Varastad, who had grown up in Rome, to become the new king of Armenia, to rule under the regency of Musher Mamigonian. The Mamigonian dynasty were also very pro-Roman, so this whole move infuriated the Persian king Shapur, who had begun cozying up to King Pap. In the next 10 years, all three of these men would come to rule Armenia. 
But that's a story for a different video. So be sure to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell or else the ghost of the demon king pop will visit you tonight.